friend Elle Steve here. Miller. And welcome back to Going In Raw News Brief. And try to keep this one brief today, but let's try to get this one up to 600 likes. Smash that like button, Larson. What's in the news? Oh, there's top news story. You look like a, a badass. You look like a... a uh, what you were about to say first is probably you look like a, 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 a... I believe it's your true feeling, so just go ahead and say it. You look like a, a motorcycle guy. Mm-mm. Cool. No, it looks like someone who lost a bet. That's what I look like. All right. Anyways, anyways, uh, what's the do? Uh, this thing is kind of annoying, and apparently Vince is annoyed by something too. On a recent Wrestling Observer Radio, Melser talked about Vince's feelings about the COVID nineteen pandemic, and he, uh, we find out that he's uh, annoyed. <laughs> why are they also doing mentioned- this to me? Why are they doing this? And he also mentioned the WWE has apparently yet to institute any kind of COVID testing at the Performance Center. This is what Melser has to say. Transcripts from Cultaholic. Quote, WWE has still yet to do, as far as I know, one test so far. As it was explained to me, Vince McMahon is not receptive to the outside world. He finds what's going on in the outside world to be an annoyance because it's getting in the way of his vision. He's got a vision, and all these people are freaking getting in the way of what he wants to do by not letting him run whatever. I might have to listen to this particular episode because the uh, Meltzer saying freaking is probably pretty hilarious um, because it sounds like he's kind of just trolling McMahon. Uh, But this is not shocking at all, at all. The man doesn't believe in illness and all these people are claiming that this illness is a real thing. He doesn't believe it. He's one of these billionaire guys who thinks that the world should revolve around him. Why are they taking away his precious wrestling? I mean, he probably thinks that illness is an inconvenience, and that's why he doesn't we always have it. this conversation. I don't think he doesn't believe in germs. I, just, I, I, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't wrong, think but... that he doesn't believe in germs either, but I do think that he believes that it's a matter of mind over matter. I think he totally. thinks, oh, people Being should just... sick is an inconvenience. If you just power through it, it's not an issue. Right. Um, the, the, uh, UFC. They did, they ran a show, tested people. AEW latest round testing everybody. Here's the thing uh, though. This is the thing that's kind of that that's, you know, he's. It can't be so annoying that he's not willing to poke fun at himself a little bit over it. I mean, on in that uh, uh the the Money in the Bank match, you know, it showed him doing his uh, hand, hand sanitizer. Yeah. Um, I I mean, what what's surprising to me? I I brought this up on the AEW uh, recap. Um. They now that wrestling is considered an essential service in Florida, that should theoretically open up the WWE to bring in as many people that work there and populating the performance center with fans, even if it's just like a ton of writers and producers. I mean, they've got it. They they fired like over 100 employees, I think, on Black Wednesday, what they call it. Um I mean, it wasn't just wrestlers. It was a ton of actual like people that we've never seen or heard before. Mm. Um, I mean, they could take all the people they furloughed, the people they laid off, bring them back in if they want. I mean, they have a lot of money. If they want fans, if they want the appearance that there's people there, AEW's done that. Um, I mean, there's a ton of people at uh, at the Dynamite show that we watched the other day. Yeah, um, two of them. Yeah, but you know, obviously, if you're going to do that, you, you want to test them. Just say, okay, cool. Let's do. Let's let's get a bunch of tests. I know they've got pull. They can get the tests. Like, I mean, you even know. just even just for the talents that are there, regardless if they bring in any crowd, for the health and safety of of the production crew, the staff on hand that 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 needs to be there and is there on, on a regular basis, the talent, hell for Vince himself. I know he he doesn't believe that uh that that sick being sick is anything to worry about, uh. But if if you know he's up there in years, if this thing comes along and crosses his path and he gets it. You know, it it could be bad for old Vince McMahon. Oh, he, dude, there's no way he would be able to be convinced of that, and there's no way that he would be convinced that you know it'll make his talent feel better or it's better for his talent. I'm just saying, if if it's from the perspective of hey, let's make our you want fans, we know they want fans. They're trying to line up a venue for SummerSlam with fans there. You can have the perception of fans if you just bring in a bunch of your employees and populate your your thing. Well, but the, to do yeah. that, you need to test them. Yeah, exactly. But I'm just saying, just you, you take that out of the equation. Just for the people who are there, you would think yourself, they would. Protect you would people. think they would. It would make I mean, all the sense in the world. Vince's philosophy seems to be, you know, mind over matter when it comes to illness. I could see why he's not. To, it's asinine, 
it's asinine, but it's Vince McMahon. Yeah. No, I know. It's, you know, I, as I mentioned on the NXT recap, I think it's like, you know, we hear uh, reports that uh, he, he, there's no, he harbors no ill will towards Becky or, or Seth for Becky's uh, pregnancy. Uh, in fact, he was happy for him, which is a normal human response when someone uh, is starting a family. You're happy for him. Um, and, and, but we're not used to Vince McMahon uh, having normal human responses to things. Yeah. And so, you know, we, when you heard about the Becky situation, we're like, okay, maybe Vince, he's turning over a new leaf. Uh, uh, and, and it, it, you know, apparently he's in some sort of different mood these days. Uh, and then you hear stuff like this where he's not getting uh, anybody tested prior to entering the, the performance center before any shoots. Uh, he sees this huge worldwide calamity as an annoyance for his business. He's like, eh, probably it's just the same old Vince McMahon. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. He did, he's, he's old, he doesn't get it. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, when you get older, you get. The thing is, no matter what, when you get older, you do get weirder. My parents are getting weirder, you know. Like I see it all the time. It doesn't mean they're bad. Doesn't mean they get like bad or anything. But I think they do. They get more stuck in their ways. Like even when my dad at the beginning of this, he was like, "Oh, I'm not worried at all." They're stuck in South America, and he's like, "I'm not worried about this. I'm gonna hop on a plane." I'm like, "Dad, they're taking it very seriously here. You need to do this." I am taking it seriously. Well, it didn't sound like it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, what's next? Yeah, uh, and anyway, speaking of Vince's vision, which he holds so dear, uh, <laughs> Russell Votes reported today that WB had something huge, mm. huge mm. planned for the summer, but it had to be scrapped mm. because of that uh, mm. annoying uh, uh, pandemic. That's what Russell Votes tweeted. Steve, you want to read this? Yeah, they say, for what it's worth, I've been told there was a long, major storyline that was to unfold over the span of weeks. During the spring and summer, weeks or months, because that what, once you get to five weeks, you're past a month. Anyways, uh, similar to the McMahon limo explosion or the Nexus invasion debut that was put on hold due to no fans in attendance. Crowd reaction plays a major part, so maybe we're potentially talking about debuts, invasions, cross-brand storytelling. Shots Seen a fired. heel turn. My dog is back there licking her asshole right now, everybody. <laughs> you. 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 Yeah, heel turns, face turns, tweeners. What's going on? Is it slow? What I, find mo- what I find most shocking about this is that they had a, a, a long major storyline planned that was going to take weeks. They had three whole weeks planned in advance. But here's <laughs> now the thing. it's been ruined. Here's the thing. If it's, if it's six to seven weeks, let's just say... What's easier to say and what makes more sense to say? A month and a half or six or seven weeks? Because you said, you know, if you get past four weeks and you're talking months, but we get in this area of between months, I kind of feel like six weeks is, e- is easier and I, I get a better sense of exactly how long that is in a month and a half. A month and a half feels like an estimation. Would you consider a six-week storyline a long-term storyline that could go from the spring to the summer? I mean, yeah, no. it could... It could be on the border of between the spring and summer. It could be the week of, if it starts June nineteenth, <laughs> right. which yeah. is about the second to last day of spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and goes six weeks from there. Then yeah, it does span two seasons per se. No, just, <laughs> you, you, you're t- you were saying earlier about how if you get past four weeks and you should be talking in months, not weeks. But I'm like, if it's like a month and a half, yeah, I sure. Kind of yeah, you could weeks. you could you could extend like up to seven weeks. I'd probably call seven weeks two months. I'd call six weeks weeks, like long weeks. Sure. You don't want to say a month and a half. Um, what could the storyline be, though, dude? Throw, throw something out there. Um, I'm thinking maybe it was a more expansive version of Zelina's, Zelina Vega's stable. I'm thinking it was something to do with the SmackDown hacker. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a good one. Starts then, like just yeah. because I mean the, the SmackDown hacker stuff in those videos like there's all sorts of storylines like literally every story line on SmackDown is playing out on the TVs there. And maybe they had a more expansive thing, a more expansive idea what this is going to be. Uh, but then you know and they they had a, they had a they had a payoff in mind that was going to be huge. They get a huge crowd reaction, huge, and then there's no fans, no reaction to be had. So push it. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Anymore. Smart. Maybe that's why Vince is just like eager to get crowds back because he really wants to do the story because he thinks it's so great his it's vision his, is so 
is so great. This is his masterpiece, his his, his magnum opus, the greatest storyline. <laughs> Forget the mega powers, you know. Forget Austin versus Mr. McMahon. This is the thing they're gonna remember him by. It's true and right and dramatic. And uh It's his the Irishman. Real yeah, sure. Real world events comes and interrupts him, and he's so annoyed. Because to him, a three hour long feature film is like the equivalent to seven weeks of storytelling. <laughs> probably. Probably. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, let us know what you guys think this epic, epic storyline is. That uh, we sadly will have to wait for another year. Apparently, missing to. out on. Yeah. Anyway, this, this could just make like the most riveting wrestling programming in years. Could be, could have been on our like right in front of us. Here Five million viewers. Five oh, million viewers. And that's the floor, man. <laughs> Let us know what you guys think it is in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye.